Welcome to the IEC uh, content studio here in Hall 6 at IEC 23 in Barcelona. Uh, our topic today is cross-media content. And our guest is Javi Rojo, content director of UBTV. You are part of the media pro group. Welcome. Yes, thank you very much. Javi, um, what is UBeat? Well, UBeat is um, it's an ecosystem for the Gen Z, a multi-platform ecosystem for the Gen Z. Uh, we have uh, uh, two linear channels, one for Spain and one for Latin America. And we have an OTT and an app. So we're, it's, it's a very diverse ecosystem where we have uh, more than half a million unique users every month. And uh, we reach over 15 million households. Wow. And uh, yeah, we're there for the, for the younger audiences, uh, always uh, discovering new talents and working for already big talents and finding the themes that are more, m most interesting for the Gen Z. That's our special. What's the business model? Is this ad-driven ad ad or is it a paid for, paid for channel? How does it work? No, it is free. It's free? Our, our, yes, the, the app and the, and the OTT is free. And uh, we do have our, our linear channel is included in different cable companies. Okay, okay. So the linear channel would be part of cable, yeah. but all our content is in the, a, the uh, OTT and the app, which is completely free. So when you try to engage with these young audiences, sign, what, what kind of formats are you using and uh, which, which ones did you develop? Well, what we try to do is we try to um, either adapt or create formats that are understandable and engaging for the, young, for the younger audiences. Um, so we have a very big variety of themes in UBeat. Uh, we, we started more as an eSport and gaming content platform. Uh, also, because we're, we're our partners, the LVP is also Media Pro Group, yeah. so it made a lot of sense. But we started uh, developing more into uh, content creation with the most important content creators in Spain and Latin America. And uh, well, we 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 started uh, discovering and investigating what kind of themes could we also approach besides gaming and esports. So we started getting into freestyle, music, uh, content creation, like uh, lifestyle content creation, right? Uh, even sports, we're also getting into big franchises like skateboarding, drone racing, and uh, even football, uh, basketball stuff. So, it, it, but always telling it in a manner that is understandable and approachable by the Gen Z. And I, I think it's not only the themes, but also the way you're presenting it. So also the, the formats you're using, right? Absolutely. Actually, I, we have kind of a, a theory that is don't try to change it. Just try to make it better in the way that what we bring is we bring, we bring the production know-how of a traditional, like, for example, I come from traditional media. Yeah. You know, I've done MasterChef, The Voice. I come from traditional media. And I, we think the important thing is to adapt uh, to, to, to put our know-how in production media to better the product of the content creators. But you can't try to fight it. You can't try to change it and try to make it traditional, but use the traditional tools to make better the content that they consume. Does it also mean to make it shorter because attention span is very different? Yes, we are, uh, uh, these are uh, content monsters, right? Yeah. We call them the content <laughs> monsters. We have a, an, an audience that is very young and the attention span has changed, right? Yeah. And, and I think it's very, it's very important to understand the way they consume these things because you can, you can learn a lot about social media, right? They're, they are putting all the resources into creating content that keeps them engaged in the different platforms of social media. You have to learn about that and create content that is shorter, that is much more direct in your face. It's yeah. the content that is in your face that is not always about the production value or the wrapping. It's very much about what's inside and who is telling it to you. And a much faster storytelling or much more, much really, really fast too. You cannot spend your time in, in things around it. You have to go to the core of the message or what you're trying to tell. You, you lose them over five minutes, yeah. you're done. I have yeah. one question. Um, is there also a big difference between the Spanish and the Latin America audience or is the Gen Z very, very similar? No, we, we, we work a lot in both sides. And uh, while we share a language, uh, there are completely different trends in both places. Yeah. And that is one of the important things from UBIT is our, our, we really work hard in making it and personalizing every territory. So we have original content in Mexico, in Colombia, in Argentina, in Central America, US Hispanic for, the, yeah. for USA. And 
while we share the language, we do not, we do not have the same trends. And therefore, in UBIT, we have a, a young team that is all day investigating and seeing what's going on in all these countries. So we create specific content for them that they can, they can reflect on. And is it also about uh, the talent and the, the people? I mean, it's, it's not about the, just the trends in, for, for different uh, topics, but I, I would assume it's really the talent that counts. I would say the talent is key. And, and uh, let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, the news, yeah. right? This is kind of like a news setup, a traditional news setup, right? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> the corporate anchors and everything. <laughs> so uh, uh, 20 years ago, when you watched the news, the source was important, not the talent. Yeah. Not you guys in this case. Sorry, no, but... Well, but it's debatable if we have talent, but at least... No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the key was the source of the information, what you were telling. This is not like that anymore. Right now, the talent is not a host. The talent is the source for the audience. I trust you because I trust you as a talent. I don't trust your sources, I trust you. And this has changed because now you are watching that talent tell you a news. And, and it's not about the packaging of the news, it's everything is in your face, even double speed. What are you going to do to make it beautiful if someone's going to watch it at double speed, yeah. you know? <laughs> so the, the news is a, is a very good example that the talent is not a host. The talent is the prescriber now. And the talent is the one that brings the people to the show. And their way of telling it is the key, no? And uh, let me give you another head scratcher, which is uh, reaction videos. Yeah. So now, when I was a kid, if you didn't get to play, you were pissed. Yeah. You wanted to play. They don't want to play anymore. They want to watch people playing. And now tell me this is not a head scratcher. I mean, you would have never thought. And now it's about watching others tell you their experience while, while they play. So we're, we're learning all these processes and putting them into our original formats and using the keys of engagement that these talents have in their normal platforms. And from, from a technology side or workflow side, is, is there any difference or can you leverage what you know from traditional uh, workflows? Well, the speed changes. I think it's very important the way that you need to create con uh, content that branches out into social media. Like well, when I did traditional shows, you did a show one hour, two hours, that was pretty much the end of it. Yeah. Then the Im Im embedded content started in which you did some little capsules for social media, but that was not the key part of it. Now that's almost the key part of the content is how you distribute it in social media, how you encapsulate the information so you can spread it all around and be present in all the different ways. And this does change the way you produce it because you, you have to think about it in a more divisible way so you can be everywhere at the same time. And I, I guess you're doing a lot of experimentation. Um, can you tell us about any failures in that or le learning <laughs> ex experience as the Americans failures. would put it? Well, we don't have that many failures in UBEAT, but, but well, I can tell you that, that in my personal opinion, it's not that much about the technical part. Mm -hmm. You know, but people are going a bit crazy about let's do it in VR or in AR or let's go all, in, all digital and let's... Actually, many of the people that watch this content does not care if the anchor is in New York or in Siberia. They just don't care. You can be in your setup home yeah. with a poster here and a little stuffed doll over here. And that's fine because the content that you're giving is interesting. And I think that is, that, that, that's, some, that's something important that maybe you don't need to think that much about the construction of the thing, or, of making the production value and the design of the production as much as the content, direct content you're giving. Fascinating, Stefan. Huh? Fascinating. Very fascinating. Javi Rojo, thanks a lot. It was really insightful. And, uh, you know, this is uh, about technology, pro AV, everything here, big LEDs. Uh, but really the content, the way, you know, we also have to design new hardware, I assume, in the future, which adapts to this new way of consuming content. Yes, and actually one more thing that I wanted to tell you is that we were thinking what new ways can we, can we develop into bringing younger audiences into UBeat, right? And one of the things is last year we started UBeat Live, which is a festival, an international festival, where we actually make the things that they consume in, in platforms become real.
Wow. So we did uh, big finals of esports. We did freestyle uh, concerts. We did uh, gaming arena, arenas, uh, urban sports, uh, urban art, right? So what we do now in UBIT is that we've thrown down the fourth wall and now we're actually creating live festivals where all the, the younger audiences can come and live what they normally use on platform. And get this emotional thing to, to, the, to, the, to the brand and, and everything, And right? get their faces off yeah. their screens for at least a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, that's really great. I mean, bringing that to the real world it's, it's, and, and combining it, it, it's just a great story. Let me tell you, many times they're watching it there and watching it here and doing like that. And the also, same yeah. content. So it's not so easy to get their faces off. Yeah, I mean, fantastic. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure.